Welcome to the Scaringi Law Lunch Break. This is your time during the day to learn a little bit about uh, the news and hot legal topics while you enjoy your lunch. At Scaringi Law, we practice in among areas, among other areas, campaign finance and election law. This practice area was rocked yesterday by the guilty plea of President Trump's former attorney, Michael Cohen. Mr. Cohen pled guilty to eight counts charged against him by the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Counts seven and eight pertain to alleged campaign finance violations. Count seven charges Mr. Cohen with willfully causing an unlawful corporate contribution. And count eight charges Mr. Cohen with making an excessive campaign contribution. Now, in short, Mr. Cohen set up two limited liability companies, which he used to do the following. One, he purchased the rights of a non-disclosure agreement Karen McDougall had signed with the National Enquirer for $125,000. Before he could remit that amount, the media company informed him the deal was off, interestingly. Second, he entered into an agreement with Stormy Daniels, in which he signed a confidential settlement agreement for $130,000. He did make that payment. Now, Karen McDougal and Stormy Daniels were selling their rights to their story about alleged affairs they had with Donald Trump when he was a citizen and not running for elective office. These agreements were negotiated and signed during the time Mr. Trump was running for president. Mr. Cohen was later reimbursed by the Trump Organization for these payments. Now, the critical part of the government's indictment against Mr. Cohen is the government's allegation that he caused or made the payments in order to influence the 2016 presidential election. Now, the statute Mr. Cohen was charged with violating does not define the purpose of influencing an election. The law is nebulous and murky in this area. The phrase, influencing an election, is defined by the courts. The leading case, ironically, comes from the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, which has binding authority over the U.S. District Court for the, for the Southern District of Manhattan, which is the court presiding over Mr. Cohen. And the Second Circuit Court decision is strongly uh, in favor of, uh, or goes strongly against, the government's prosecution and the government's position in this case. In the Second Circuit case, it held that an, an, an advertisement in the New York Times that was purchased by a group of concerned citizens and that called for the impeachment of President Nixon listed those congressmen who, who had voted for his impeachment on its honor roll and stated in the ad that they, this group of concerned citizens would devote its resources and funds and publicity in aid of any new candidate for election or re-election of an incumbent member of Congress who supports impeachment. But the Second Circuit Court held that ad was not done for the purpose of influencing an election. The court held the 17 some thousand dollars spent on the ad was not a campaign contribution to the members of Congress listed in the ad. It was not a, con a campaign contribution at all. The money was used to pay for the ad. The court was looking at the principal aim or thrust of the ad and concluded it was to impeach the president and not influence elections. The court stated, the central theme of the advertisement at issue here relates to the impeachment of the president, not specific election campaigns or candidates. As such, the purpose of the advertisement, as we construe it, was at most only incidentally to support candidates and engage in, quote, political activity, end quote, within the Federal Election Campaign Act. So in the case involving Mr. Cohen, the contribution was made for the purpose of ensuring Stormy Daniels did not disclose her alleged affair with Mr. Trump. And the same with Karen McDougal. There is nothing in the non-disclosure agreement about Trump's campaign for president. Non-disclosure agreements do not tout Trump's America First policies or include statements such as making America great again. The agreements do not engage in political activity within the definition of the Federal Election Campaign Act. If the Second Circuit Court of Appeals found that an advertisement that discussed the impeachment of President Nixon and how the committee who paid for it 
would give money to incumbents and candidates for Congress for their elections who would vote for impeachment was not done for the purpose of influencing an election. How can paying money in exchange for a non-disclosure agreement about an alleged sexual encounter that had nothing to do with an election possibly be a campaign contribution? It's not. Mr. Cohen has pled guilty to crimes that do not exist. And the Justice Department already went down this road before when it prosecuted then-presidential candidate John Edwards for allegedly coordinating with already maxed out campaign donors of his to have them pay money to his then-pregnant mistress in order to hide her from the media at a critical point during his campaign. It was an unprecedented prosecution for the Justice Department. The jury deadlocked on five of the six counts and acquitted Mr. Edwards on the sixth count, and the Obama Justice Department chose not to retry the case. Now, as the Federal Election Commission said in a prior advisory opinion, the key question is, would the third party pay the expense if the candidate was not running for federal office? Now, although that standard and that question itself is not enough for a violation, because the courts require the primary purpose to have been to influence an election, the case involving Mr. Cohen does not even satisfy this broader definition set forth in the FEC advisory opinion. The Trump Organization has paid many individuals and businesses over the years to settle disputes and resolve claims, and has had them sign non-disclosure agreements. This is a common occurrence in any corporation across the country. So yes, this is something the Trump Organization would have done even if Mr. Trump weren't running for federal office, but in any event, that's not the standard. Primary purpose is the standard. Consider the 2010 case involving Senator John Ensign, Republican of Nevada. In that case, the FEC ruled legal a payment Ensign's parents made to the treasurer of his campaign committee and his PAC after it was disclosed that the treasurer and Ensign had an affair. FEC then said that's legal. That's not a campaign contribution. Consider this. Assuming for the sake of argument that paying hush money is a campaign contribution, which it's not, had Donald Trump made the payments to these fine ladies, Ms. Daniels and Ms. McDougal, directly, the Department of Justice could not charge him because a person is permitted, permitted to make unlimited contributions to his own campaign. Yet we now have the legal absurdity of Mr. Cohen pleading guilty to non-crimes. Although the president cannot be indicted during his term of office, the facts Mr. Cohen pled to mean President Trump is in effect an unindicted co-conspirator for alleged violations of the Federal Election Act. The purpose of all of this is, of course, to set up House Democrats with grounds to impeach the president for, quote, high crimes and misdemeanors, end quote. Well, that's about all the time we have today for the Scaringi Law Lunch Break, and sorry for the length of today's talk, but this is a matter of high importance, and it's important for you to know that your president uh, did not violate uh, any campaign finance laws. Campaign finance and election law, uh, that's an extremely complex area of the law with arcane, murky, and vague statutes and regulations, as we've just discussed, but it has massive and severe penalties if you get it wrong. So if you're a candidate for a political office or a treasurer for a candidate or a political committee, make sure to hire a competent campaign finance and election law attorney. This is a practice area that we handle here at Scaringi Law. Uh, for more information, uh, you may contact me at 717-657-7770. Well, enjoy your lunch.